He would tell her when she needed to be on, uh, when um, he wanted to talk to her. Uh, it's crazy that like I was just putting these things out there yeah. when I was so young that like now you look back and I'm like, I have no idea. What I Welcome to YouTuber Headlines. My name's Oakley. If you're new here, this is a commentary channel all about YouTube moms. I post new videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok at YouTuber Headlines for extra content. Over the weekend, I saw this video on Instagram going around. Everybody's talking about it. Everyone's sharing it. You guys have got to hear this. If your kids play Roblox, if your kids are on social media at all. Her video is almost 30 minutes long, so I can't play the entire video, but I will link her Instagram account in the description box if you want to check out the entire video. Uh, there were times that he would tell her that if she really liked him, she would chop all her hair off that she would dye it purple. Those are how they know, those are ways that they know that they're in control, um, that these kids are all in. Um, I think the hardest part for me was knowing that uh, he took a huge portion of the end of her childhood. He controlled her to the point that he would tell her when she needed to be on, uh, when um, he wanted to talk to her. Um, he used the other people, which were him, against her. Um, one would write him and say, because you were uh, not nice to him, because you didn't do this for him, uh, he tried to kill himself. Can you imagine a, she was 13, she's 13. Can you imagine the weight of the world? He told her to kill herself. He would beat her down so bad and tell her she was fat and ugly and nobody loved her. And then he would come back and say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm here for you. I'm the only person that will ever love you. I'm here for you anytime you need me. I'm so sorry. I just had a bad day. I'm just really struggling right now. And then she would come back with, I'm so sorry. I should have been nicer to you. They prey on the sweet ones. She was so sweet reading her little messages. She was so concerned. I have to be careful the words I choose to use in this video because you guys know YouTube doesn't like certain words. So basically, this mom had a 13-year-old daughter who was playing Roblox, was approached by a man pretending to be a 15-year-old boy. Roblox is a popular game. A lot of kids play Roblox, but you have to be aware. There are people on Roblox pretending to be kids. This mom's message is kids don't belong on social media. That's the bottom line here. That's the message. Family vloggers, people on YouTube who share their kids online, are really giving these people, peas, you guys know what I mean when I say peas, access to their children. The world has changed. It is changing. And when something is changing, you have to change and adapt with it. I wanted to share this story because I know there are some of you out there who have kids that play Roblox. Aspen from Aspen and Parker. She's been on YouTube for almost 11 years, she said. So she was a teenager when she started posting on YouTube. And I think just being, I was watching videos the other day from, I think I was married, so not even like that long ago, mm -hmm. but I just was like randomly watching my own videos and it just is crazy like how much I put out on the internet that I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I don't remember. So I don't regret it, but I'm like, it is kind of crazy that like I was just putting these things out there yeah. when I was so young that like now you look back and I'm like, I have no idea what I was saying or like if I think the same now or anything. For Ava. Aspen is around 25. So if she started YouTube 11 years ago, she started when she was 14, 14 or 15 years old. And she just said she was so young, she was just putting all this information on the internet, just sharing everything. That's so scary. Can you imagine being 15 years old and just picking up the camera and sharing online? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're sharing. It doesn't seem like her parents were involved. I don't know that for sure, but if they were involved, do you think they would have been the filter? They would have said, okay, this is appropriate to share. This is not appropriate to share. And it doesn't sound like that was happening. And this is how a lot of YouTubers started as teenagers, just picking up the camera, filming, posting it on YouTube. Do you guys remember Nikki Philippi, the family vlogger who put their dog down instead of rehoming him? Nikki and her husband actually got off YouTube for a while. They came back and as you can see, their videos don't really get that many views, 10 to 15,000 views maybe. Well, three days ago, she announced she's pregnant. And that video got 26,000 views, which is double, around double what she typically pulls in. We all know that pregnancy related content sells, pulls in the views. If you have a YouTube channel that's not doing well, 
I mean, for the amount of subscribers she has, she doesn't pull in the views. Posting pregnancy-related content will definitely help pull your channel out of that hole it's in because we all know people love babies, people love pregnancy content. I received this comment on a video I posted about Megan Lee where she talks about having to shop all the time for content. If you guys haven't seen that video, I will link it in the description box. You should definitely check it out. The viewer said, how come you never talk about Kim from the Wads when you talk about haul videos? Kim literally has an abundance of shop with me videos on her channel that literally leaves me speechless. How do people find that relatable? People criticize Megan for doing the same thing, but somehow Kim always flies under the radar when she's guilty of doing the exact same thing. Just shop around for content. Name one person who goes to the store almost every day. How can you possibly need something daily that you have to go to the store for it? Just because Kim is goofy and tries to show people that she was poor once upon a time, which a lot of influencers were probably, does not mean she is very relatable. By being goofy, which has become her... USP. She actually knows how to play up her audience, but her shopping content is unrealistic, as Megan's, or probably more too. It's interesting that I got this comment because I was checking out Kim's channel recently. I don't watch all of her videos, but I'll check in every now and then. And I was thinking there are so many videos based around shopping. Kim definitely does her fair share of shopping for content. What do you guys think about this? Every year we vote for the most relatable YouTube mom over on Instagram at YouTuber Headlines. And two years in a row, Kim won most relatable mom. So a lot of you guys find her relatable, but she definitely shops a lot for content. Do you guys remember this video where I talked about Tiffany Beeston getting scammed? I'm not gonna go into all the details in this video, but you definitely need to check that out if you haven't seen it. I will link it in the description box. But a viewer reached out to Tiffany after she declared she was scammed on Instagram. The viewer said, yeah, but likely supported a small business versus a billionaire. Tiffany said, wrong, it came from China and took four weeks. The viewer said, eek. Tiffany said, that's why I was so upset because I'm not sure it was an Amazon seller just making extra money. Lesson learned. Someone else said they got it for $3 on Sheen. Just wanted to give you guys that update on Tiffany getting scammed. <laughs> I do find that interesting. If there's something you would like to share, leave a comment. Let's talk about everything. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Go follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at YouTuber Headlines. And remember, new videos every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.